Water, sand, and snow are simple elements of nature, but when taken to extremes, they become forces that shape and define the very world we live in. Imagine yourself standing in the middle of a desert where the sun is scorching mercilessly, turning the sand beneath your feet into a red-hot oven. Now imagine yourself in a place where it's raining so hard that asking you to hide under an umbrella seems like a joke. Or maybe the way you find yourself in a cold wasteland where the wind pierces you like a knife and it never seems to stop snowing. But what makes these places so extreme? Is it mere geographical coincidence or are there complex scientific phenomena involved? And more importantly, how do life forms, including humans, adapt to these harsh conditions? Scientists devote their lives to studying these extreme conditions, not just out of curiosity, but because understanding them is crucial. They hold the keys to understanding our future, to unlocking the mysteries of climate change, and perhaps to our very survival. So how do humans and animals survive in such conditions? What ingenious adaptions have they developed? And what can their resilience teach us about meeting the challenges of a rapidly changing world? In the northern reaches of Chile lies a stretch of land so dry, it seems as if the gods themselves forgot to give it water. Welcome to the Atacama Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. Here, the sky remains perpetually clear, devoid of clouds, bringing life-giving rain. And some parts of this desert landscape have not seen significant rainfall for nearly 500 years. The Atacama has long been a subject of fascination and study. Early explorers were seduced by tales of a land so barren it defied all logic. Today, it serves as a natural laboratory for scientists from around the world. Believe it or not, the Atacama is so dry that NASA uses it as a test site for Mars rovers. Conditions here are as close to the Martian landscape as possible while remaining within Earth's limits. But what makes the Atacama so arid? Well, there are two main factors involved, the Hadley cell and the rain shadow effect. In a nutshell, the Hadley cell is an air circulation system that pushes moist air out of the desert. Meanwhile, the Andes block out the remaining moisture, casting what's called a rain shadow over the region. The result? An environment so hostile that even microbes are struggling to survive. Nevertheless, this extreme drought provides invaluable information about how life could potentially exist on other planets. Despite its harshness, the Atacama is not devoid of life. Both plants and animals here have developed remarkable adaptations for survival, some plants can store water in their thick leaves and rodents hide deep underground to escape the heat. What about the people? Well, indigenous peoples have called this unforgiving land their home for generations. They've mastered the art of living in scarcity using ancient methods of gathering fog and dew. By erecting nets on hilltops, they capture moisture from passing fog, turning it into a source of water. This is a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. From the parched lands of the Atacama, we go to a place where water is abundant, even perhaps overwhelmingly so. Welcome to Mosinarum and Cherrapunji, two neighboring cities in India that vie for the title of the wettest place on Earth. Here, the skies are overcast for most of the year, soaking the ground with more than 467 inches of precipitation every year. That's nearly 40 times more precipitation than New York City receives. The abundance of water has shaped not only the landscape, but also the culture and lifestyle of the locals. Markets are overflowing with raincoats for sale, from handmade bamboo umbrellas to intricately designed raincoats. Rain is a constant companion, a life giver, nourishing crops and filling rivers. Yet it also brings challenges from landslides to waterborne diseases. People here have learned to live in harmony with rain, utilizing its gifts while mitigating its dangers. But what causes such extreme rainfall in these regions? The answer lies in the combination of the monsoon system and the orographic uplift. Warm, humid air from the Bay of Bengal travels through this region where it is lifted by the Kasi Hills, forcing the air to cool 
and release moisture. This meteorological phenomenon turns Mosinarum and Cherrapungi into true cloud magnets, attracting moist air like nowhere else on Earth. In a place where conventional bridges would have rotted due to constant humidity, local residents built living bridges by training tree roots to form natural arches, and these living structures blend seamlessly with their surroundings. Everything, including native wildlife from frogs with webbed feet to birds with water-resistant feathers, have adapted to their surroundings, allowing them to thrive in this aquatic world. From the torrential rains of Mosinarum and Cherrapungi, we now venture into a realm where water is but a mirage. Welcome to Death Valley, a place so hot that it holds the record for the highest air temperature ever recorded on Earth 134 degrees Fahrenheit. The sun reigns here, scorching the earth and challenging the very limits of life. The relentless heat turns the valley into a natural furnace where the air seems to burn. Death Valley takes its ominous name from the pioneers who barely survived crossing this unforgiving terrain. Yet despite its reputation, it has been the site of human activity for thousands of years from indigenous tribes to gold prospectors. Today, Death Valley is a national park, attracting those who dare to experience the extreme conditions. But make no mistake, the risks are real. Every year, people underestimate the heat in the valley, resulting in life-threatening situations. So what makes Death Valley so incredibly hot? Its unique topography plays an important role. Surrounded by mountain ranges, the valley acts as a natural oven, trapping warm air and not allowing it to escape. In addition, the valley's low elevation, 282 feet below sea level at its lowest point, means that the air is compressed and heated as it descends, further raising the temperature. But even in this inhospitable environment, life finds a way out. Plants such as a Joshua tree have deep root systems that allow them to tap underground water sources, and the Death Valley pupfish do well in water that can reach temperature as high as 116 degrees Fahrenheit. For humans, survival here is a matter of preparation and respect for the elements. Park rangers emphasize the importance of carrying enough water, staying out of the sun during peak hours, and never underestimating the extreme conditions of the valley. Ironically, the very element that makes Death Valley so challenging, its bright sunlight, is also a source of sustainable energy. Solar farms harness the sun's energy, turning one of the Earth's harshest environments into a luminary of renewable energy. From the scorching heat of Death Valley, we travel to a land of ice and fire, where the winds howl with such fury they can freeze you to the bone. Welcome to Iceland, a place where ice cyclones are not just a meteorological phenomenon, but a way of life. Here, cyclones are born from cold Arctic air colliding with warmer Atlantic currents. The result is a vortex of wind and snow that can last for days, turning the landscape into a frozen wonderland for some and a dangerous trap for others. Today, the approach of a cyclone elicits a well-coordinated response. Meteorologists are warning and residents are preparing to strike, all too aware of the power these storms can unleash. But what fuels these ice storms? The science of cyclones in Iceland is the story of contrasts. Warm ocean currents meet cold air, low-pressure systems interact with high-pressure areas. These opposing forces create a rotating mass of air that draws in moisture and turns it into snow as it enters colder regions. Cyclones often follow a predictable path, but their intensity can vary, making each one a unique event that tests the resilience of both the people and the environment around them. But even in such harsh conditions, life goes on. Arctic foxes have thicker fur, and some plants produce antifreeze proteins to survive the cold. For the people of Iceland, living in cyclone conditions has led to a number of innovative solutions. 
Homes are built to withstand strong winds, and geothermal energy provides a reliable source of heat even during the worst storms. And when the storm passes, the community comes together to celebrate life, embracing the beauty and challenges of living in one of the most extreme climates in the world. From the icy cyclones of Iceland, we now travel to the Southern Hemisphere to a city that dances to the rhythm of the wind. Welcome to Wellington, New Zealand, often called the windiest city in the world. Here, the wind is a constant companion, shaping the character of the city and the lives of its residents. On any given day, wind gusts can reach 64 miles per hour, turning umbrellas inside out and making days with messed up hair the local norm. Wellington's windy reputation dates back to its earliest days. The city was strategically located to take advantage of the prevailing winds for sailing ships, but those same winds also presented problems for the growing settlement. Today, Wellington residents have embraced their windy identity. The city is a paradise for wind sports enthusiasts and architects in turn design buildings that can withstand constant gusts of wind. But what makes Wellington so windy? The answer lies in its geography. The city sits between two mountain ranges and sits on the Cook Strait, a natural wind tunnel through which air passes at high speeds. The unique topography creates a Venturi effect where the wind is compressed and accelerated as it passes through narrow spaces, making Wellington a natural amplifier of wind currents. Nature, too, has adapted to these windy conditions. Trees grow at an angle, veering away from the prevailing winds, and seabirds such as albatrosses use strong gusts of wind to glide effortlessly across the sky. And let's not forget the upside. Wellington's wind is a valuable, renewable energy resource. Wind farms dot the landscape, turning the city's wind gust into green electricity. From the windy streets of Wellington, we ascend to a place where many extremes converge. Welcome to Mount Washington, often referred to as home to the world's worst weather. Here, the weather is unpredictable as it is harsh. In a single day, you can experience conditions ranging from blinding snowstorms to freezing winds all within a matter of hours. Mount Washington's notorious reputation is well-deserved. The mountain holds the record for the highest wind speed ever observed by man, 231 miles per hour, recorded in 1934. Today, the summit is home to a meteorological observatory where scientists endure extreme conditions to study the mountain's unique meteorological phenomena. So what makes Mount Washington a hot spot for extreme weather conditions? Its altitude plays a role, as well as its geographic location. Located at the intersection of several major storm tracks, the mountain acts as a magnet for converging air masses. These colliding air masses create a volatile mix of conditions, from rapid temperature changes to strong wind gusts, making Mount Washington a living laboratory for meteorologists. Nevertheless, even in this inhospitable environment, life finds a way out. Alpine flowers bloom in the short summer months, and snowshoe hares don winter white clothing to blend in with the snow. For adventurers, Mount Washington offers a unique challenge. The rapidly changing conditions require constant vigilance and adaptability, making each ascent a test of skill and endurance. Traveling through Earth's extreme climates from the driest deserts to the wettest rainforest, from scorching heat to icy cyclones, we saw the brute force and unpredictability of our planet's weather. These extremes are not just geographical quirks, they are the pulse of a living planet a complex system of air, water, and land that supports life in all its diversity. They challenge us, inspire us, and remind us of the delicate balance that exists in nature. As we've seen, these extremes shape not only the landscapes, but also the lives of the people, animals, and plants that inhabit them. 
So the next time you find yourself caught in a downpour or struggling against a gust of wind, remember, you are observing Earth in its most elemental form, a planet in continuous motion.